Hi guys, I thought I'd try something a little different today as a bonus video. Whilst I do a bit of arting in my sketchbook, I'll talk about what I've been up to, recent experiences and what exciting things I have planned next for my channel. This won't be so much of a process video as it is a talky vlog type video with most content being relevant to art stuff and my channel. There will still be a regular video this weekend of course, so if you're not interested in this type of video, still keep an eye out for that one. But if you are interested in finding out what exciting things I have in store and what's been going on behind the scenes here, perhaps go grab a nice cup of tea, pick up a sketchbook and draw along with me. I have a feeling that this is going to be a long video, so I will leave some timestamps in the description box down below to key sections of the video if you only want to stay to find out about certain things. So just a quick preface with what I'm doing here. I'm drawing a cat here in my sketchbook, starting off with Prismacolor Color Raise Pencils and then I'll colour it with some watercolour brush pens and I ended up also using some coloured pencil and pens as well to add in extra detail. All the materials I use for this piece will be in the video description. This was going to be a quick 20 minute real time sketchbook study to be a similar length to the voiceover but I got carried away and ended up spending just over an hour on it so I have sped the footage up by about three times. If I had known that I was going to spend as long as I did on it, I would have spent far longer on the sketch, making sure that it was a little more accurate than it is. But that's just about typical really, and I find that this tends to happen a lot when working in my sketchbook. As you may have noticed, I missed a week of uploading about a week and a bit ago, and that's because over the Christmas period I was back in the UK to spend some time with family and friends. I had managed to record one video in advance to make public whilst I was on holiday, but alongside some commissions and an exam just before I left for England, I simply didn't have time to make more. So apologies for that, but I'll try my best to make up for it. I had a fantastic time in England. I hadn't been back for two and a half years, so it was about time for me to see my friends and family members. It was also good to have some time to do a bit of drawing as well. After completing lots of commissions, it was really relaxing to draw whatever I felt like really, and play around with some new supplies too, which of course will be shown in an upcoming haul video. It was also really nice to have a bit of daylight for two and a half weeks. Where I live in Norway, we have about a month and a half of almost total darkness during the winter, so having a more normal circadian rhythm was really refreshing. Whilst in the UK, I just had to go and visit some art shops and stationers, as my corner of the country in Norway has very little choice really, and it sounds silly, but I really missed wandering around art shops just browsing and finding out about new items. There were three locally run art shops in England that I'd decided I'd stop by on my trip. I had very fond memories of them, so that just made the experience doubly good. And there's something really charming and personal about small locally run art shops compared to the huge chain type stores or online shopping. And of course, it's important to support local businesses, and yes, I suppose there is a bit of irony there, as I did travel three hours by plane just to reach them, but they are local to my hometown in England at least. Well, the first two local shops I had chosen to visit had quite obviously been shut down, which was really quite sad, but I suppose somewhat inevitable. But at least the last one I went to was still hanging on and looked to be doing quite well too, so if you do happen to be tuning in from the southeast of England, I really recommend M Saltmarsh Artist Materials in Tunbridge Wells, as they have an incredible selection of just about anything. It really is a treasure trove and I could have spent hours there. I also wandered into a WH Smith's, which is a book and stationery type store. In stores like these, I like to use my phone with mobile internet to compare prices to online stores to see if prices are considerably cheaper online, 
which happened to be the case for the majority of items unfortunately, so it was only really worth my while picking up some bits and pieces over in stock there, and something that happened to be on sale. They were selling Derwent pastel pencils open stock there, and I was tempted to pick a few up, but a lot of their items on display had obviously not been handled with care by patrons or employees, so I really didn't fancy the risk of buying a defective product, and pastel pencils are notoriously fragile and almost impossible to use if their cores have been damaged. Similarly, the majority of brushes they were selling had been damaged in some way, by those protective tubes being pulled off the ends of the brushes and then either being haphazardly forced back on, or the bristles being damaged some other way. Needless to say, it was a very sorry sight and is a helpful reminder not just to be very critical of the products that you're buying, but also the type of environment that they're in when you're buying them. On a related note, in the locally run art shop I went to, I happened to find some loose sheets of sanded pastel paper that had obviously been hidden away and forgotten for years, and some sheets were a little dusty and dirty. So of course I haggled and got them for half price, and they cleaned up just fine with a kneaded putty eraser. And that's just another benefit of shopping locally, I suppose. They seem to be much more understanding and willing to compromise. And the people working there are generally speaking more knowledgeable about the products as they are often artists as well. In other supply purchasing news, I ordered some more items from Jackson's Art Supplies. If you watched my previous haul video, you might recall that I had some issues with Jackson's in the past, but because they are very reasonably priced, have a brilliant selection and have great shipping options, I decided to use them again anyway. Unfortunately, I had another problematic encounter with them, but hopefully it's on its way to being resolved now. What had happened was that I ordered some items on the 8th of December, but one of my items, an A3 pad of paper, was put on back order as it was out of stock, and would be mailed to me at the next possible opportunity. I got my items sent to my parents in the UK as I qualified for free UK shipping on my order, and I was at home in England to receive the items when I arrived. When I checked, everything expected was there and very well packed. I had also chosen a delivery day though, and they actually had delivered it the day before, but luckily my mother was at home anyway to receive the package. But upon closer inspection, the order form said that the pad of paper would arrive on the 15th of December, and it didn't, and I only noticed that this was the case when I looked through my order form just before the new year, as I was beginning to worry that it wouldn't arrive on time. Not checking the order form sooner was totally my fault. I should have thought to look more closely at it sooner, but these things happen, I suppose. So as it was rapidly approaching the new year, I sent an email, then realised that it probably wouldn't be read soon enough, so I then went on to phone their customer helpline. After a few minutes of waiting, I was put through, then told that the pad would next be in stock after I left England, so I reorganised shipping so that the pad would be sent here to me in Norway instead. I had to pay extra for the international shipping, of course, but it wasn't extortionate at £4.22. pence. Overall, the paper still works out to be much cheaper than other online retailers. It does still feel like an unnecessary extra cost that I had to pay for, though. And it does make me wonder what happened to my order. Perhaps the paper just didn't come back in stock at all for it to be available to arrive on the 15th, or maybe something else happened for my order to be missed. And to top it all off, I got an email confirmation through saying that the item has been shipped, but my address has been misspelled, which I suppose isn't too surprising given that it isn't easy to communicate a foreign address over the phone, although frustratingly the address on my PayPal invoice was correct, and they probably could have referred to that to check. I imagine, or at least hope, that it will still arrive with me given the address is probably close enough to work its way through the system. 
but the bigger issue is that the recipient on the address is my mother and to collect packages here in Norway the recipient needs to show their ID. So in other words I might not actually be able to pick up my pad of paper if it does arrive at the post office. The customer service agent understood the whole change of address situation and why it was happening and she even addressed me as Claudia so it came as a surprise when the recipient name was incorrect as well. I've sent another email to Jackson's but they simply said that there's nothing they can do and if I have any further problems do not hesitate to contact them. It's frustrating and unnecessarily stressful and I'm just hoping that if it does arrive at my local post office the workers there will be trusting and understanding enough to accept the situation and hand off the package to me. I really want to like Jackson's for reasons already mentioned, but so far I've had issues with every single one of my orders one way or another. I'm probably just incredibly unlucky of course, but I'd love to hear your experience with the retailer, good or bad. Now moving on to more positive things and information relating more to my channel. So first off, I have a huge amount of art supplies I'd like to review and if I continue at my current rate of one review a month, I'll never get around to doing them all. So for now, I want to bump my frequency up to one every three weeks or so, and I might also start doing mini reviews as occasional bonus videos on other things, such as support materials like blenders, sharpeners, and other products I found to be really handy, and might have mentioned in other videos too, but want to take a closer look at. I don't want to become a review channel solely, I really like sharing knowledge about other things as well, and although I relish being analytical and thorough, I think repeating my format too frequently might become a little dull for you guys and draining for me. So don't worry, there will still be an interesting variety of videos coming. I do have a mini-series planned coming up about water-based markers and a few different methods of blending and techniques to try with them which will hopefully be fun and interesting, and they will be separated out over the course of a few weeks. I have three videos planned for this series so far. I also have a lot of footage that I can now release that I captured whilst working on Christmas commissions. These commissions had to remain secret until the clients gave them to their recipients. So the footage is all coloured pencil pet portraits and I plan on using the footage to demonstrate some of my glazing techniques and also how I draw fur. Coming up, hopefully in the near future, is a collaboration with the lovely Scribble Fix. I've been meaning to collaborate with her for some time now, but I've been so busy that it's been difficult to set time aside for another video that would need to be filmed in advance. I'm really looking forward to this collab video and I'm incredibly grateful that I have such a patient and understanding collaboration partner. As some of you may have noticed, in the last few months I've been adding English subtitles to my uploads. I thought that adding subtitles might mean that more of my videos can be understood and enjoyed by more people. The auto captioning does seem to be fairly accurate with most of my videos, especially from about May of 2017, which was when I started using a different microphone and the audio became a lot clearer. But auto captioning isn't perfect and it struggles a lot with brand names and unfamiliar RT jargon, so I'm now starting to add English subtitles to some of my older videos that are continuing to be frequently watched. Also, thank you very much to Agnieszka Warstad. She's been translating my videos and uploading Polish subtitles, which has been absolutely fantastic. I realise that it must be a lot of work. It takes time to subtitle them in English from scratch, so I can't begin to imagine what it's like to translate the videos too. Having somebody message me out of the blue and say that they've done all of this work purely on goodwill really warms the cockles of my heart. Another exciting little update is that I plan on hosting a giveaway on my channel soon. I'll make the announcement when I reach 2000 subscribers, which is tantalisingly close and I can't believe it. 
We've grown so quickly and it's all down to you guys so thank you so much for uh, subscribing and sharing my content with your friends and family. This giveaway is actually something I had planned to do when I reached 1000 subscribers but it took me a while to get the prizes organised and delivered and now I'm so close to 2000 that it's worthwhile to wait a couple of weeks and make the prizes bigger and better. There'll be two lucky winners. Each will receive a six set of Derwent drawing pencils, a fantastic selection of paper, a small assortment of pencils and pens, as well as a piece of my original artwork. The items included in this fun little arty care package are materials that I really enjoy using or lend themselves to techniques that I find myself using frequently. So yes, if you haven't already and you really like my videos, don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on the giveaway announcement. And of course, the sooner we hit 2000, the sooner I'll start up the giveaway. On another note, I've been arranging some of my videos into medium specific playlists, so if you want to binge watch a bunch of my videos specifically about coloured pencils or water based markers, you now can. As per tradition at this time of year, I thought I'd give myself some new goals for 2018, as well as trying to improve and maintain my current ones, to try and drive my channel a bit harder and my art journey and business as a whole. I'd love to know if you guys like to make New Year's resolutions too, or if you have any that you'd like to share that are art related. The big one for me is to keep uploading one video a week here on YouTube, but also to try and get better at uploading on time. I've been a bit hit and miss with uploading on time for the last half year or so because I'm currently studying nursing full time in my second language too and as you might imagine it's a lot of work. My schedule for the channel so far has been to upload every weekend, usually Sunday, but often I'd only get to upload on Monday or Tuesdays. There have been a few reasons why this has happened. Sometimes I've been ill, busy with schoolwork, commissions, or I've had to re-record and edit the whole video again because something has gone wrong. Other times I've had family events to go to over the weekend, and although I don't like uploading a day or two late, I'd hate to miss out spending time with family. And ultimately, I'd rather upload late than upload something rushed or that I'm not happy with, you guys deserve good quality content, not just something that's been slapped together. So to try and improve on this, I'm going to try and work ahead with my videos so that I'll have a couple of videos made in advance and I'll be working on next week's video or the one the week after in the current week, if that makes sense. I'm sure some of you know how long it takes to make a video. A conservative estimate would be that I spend about 20 hours a week working on weekly videos for my YouTube channel. Some videos might be quicker of course, and others might take a bit longer. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining here, I really enjoy making videos and communicating with you lovely people, but I do want to call attention to how much work content creators put into their videos, even if it doesn't necessarily seem like it. It was definitely a surprise for me. And all this being said, I certainly don't want to discourage you guys from sending in video suggestions. I love making content that you find really beneficial. Anyway, I digress. My next little resolution is to get better at posting on Facebook and Instagram. Before I started my degree, I was fairly good at uploading regularly. Not quite every day, but usually about five times a week or so. Now I've let that slip, and it's not that I don't have things to show, it's that I need to become more inventive with what I could take photographs of as I'm working. I also want to get better at communicating with you on there too. Speaking of which, I'd love if you could follow me on my Facebook or Instagram. I post lots of things you don't see in my videos and sneak peeks too. My next little goal for this year is to get more involved with my local art community. I'm definitely too used to staying in my comfort zone, behind my computer to share my art. 
but I think it's about time that I really try to push myself a bit and also try and market more to a local audience and community as well. Another goal I have is to see if I can use my new camera for recording and perhaps get some editing software that's a little more upmarket than Windows Movie Maker. I really want to improve the quality of my videos. My current setup has served me well so far, but there's certainly room for improvement. If I have time, I'd also love to try some live streaming at some point. Last summer I streamed on Twitch for a bit and it was great fun and I'd really like to do that again. That would also mean that I can share with you guys my real-time progress, something people have been asking a lot for, but currently I simply don't have time to edit and voice over several hours of footage in one go. I'm unsure yet if I'd want to use Twitch to stream or stream here on YouTube, so if you have any preference I'll leave a poll up in the top right, and I'd really appreciate it if you could give me your opinions on this. On a similar note, I'm also interested in starting up a Patreon at some point this year, but once again friends, I need your guidance. There's another poll under that letter I icon, and I'd appreciate it if you answered that one as well, and be honest. If you would be interested in me running a Patreon and have some specific reward ideas that you'd really love to see, I'm all ears in the comments section. I'd also love to hear feedback on my ideas and constructive criticism for my videos too. I'm constantly striving to make my regular videos better, so I would love to hear your opinions. I think that just about summarises this mammoth of a video. I don't think there's much more I could talk about. But I hope that you enjoyed this bonus video. If you'd want to see more of these personal videos in the future, please leave this video a like. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you guys continue to have a lovely week, and I'll see you in the next video.